There are many people who have the limitations in their minds, who have lost that fire in their eyes. Most people, ladies and gentlemen, go to their graves living a life far below their potential. And the question is, if you die today, what ideas, what dreams, what talents, what gifts will die with you? You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. It's what you create. It's the habit of what you put in your head. See, someone will tell you your whole life you're a piece of crap, and part of you go, you're full of it, I'm gonna show you. Lots of people have done that. They never bought it. Or someone will tell you you're beautiful your whole life, you go, I'm not really beautiful. So what people tell you doesn't matter at all. It's what you stack. It's what you assemble. You need to believe and know that your one decision, one relationship, one meeting, one book, one thought, one something away from a completely different life. It's an effort play. If you don't have self-confidence, you've never kept the promises you make to yourself. Check that box. If you have self-confidence, you've started to keep the promises you make to yourself. So if I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna do 10 reps in the gym, I do one more. If I'm gonna do 45 minutes on the treadmill, I do one more. If I wanna make 10 contacts in a day, I do that and one more. There's a lot of times where I don't know how I'm gonna move forward, but I ask myself one question. Can you take another step? And that answer is always yes. You're passing through that, that keyhole, but if you pass through it, then something massive opens up on the other side. And it is definitely the case that disciplinary institutions, universities are exactly that, is they're places of guidance and they're places to encourage people to develop the discipline that's necessary to see beyond the discipline. I mean, that's why we have disciplines, right? I mean, the words aren't there by accident. And once that discipline was established, then the disciplined mind could explode in every direction, which is precisely what happened. And so, and that's the thing about growing up is that when you're a teenager and a young adult, you have to sacrifice everything you could have been as a child to be the one thing that you're aiming at. But then that opens up and, and the universities are part and parcel of that process. Change is automatic, but progress is not. Start today, right now. What do I really want in depth? What are the rituals that will get me there? And then get yourself to start a few of those actions and lock them in place. If you make the changes in yourself, you're gonna be proud and no amount of money or accolades from other people can mirror the feeling of being proud of knowing you've taken back control of your life. Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. The major key to the good life. Every day in a thousand different ways, we are trying to improve ourselves by learning how to do things. We spend a lifetime gathering knowledge in classrooms, in textbooks, in experiences. Now, if knowledge is power, if knowledge is the forerunner to success, then why do we fall short of our objectives? Why, in spite of all our knowledge and in spite of our collective experiences, do we find ourselves aimlessly wandering, settling for a life of existence rather than a life of substance? There may be many answers to this question. Your answers may be different than your associate or your spouse's or your friend's. The fundamental answer is the absence of discipline. Applying all that we know, discipline, self-discipline, we might add one more word here, consistent. Consistent self-discipline. It doesn't really matter how smart you are or how much you know, if you don't use it. And once you're disciplined, like you're, you're like a sharpened sword, man, like a well-tempered blade, and then you can go out there and operate in the world. The reason that discipline is necessary is because you're a mass of competing short-term interests and so the question is then well which short-term interests should win out and the answer to that is none of them they need to be organized into a hierarchy that makes them functional across time and across individuals get really simple things you can do right now to change your life you can go to experience it that day and then you get momentum Day one, day two, day three, day four, and all of a sudden now, what used to be hard to do is easy to do. And I think for anyone, you gotta understand, anyone can learn anything. And I'm just not willing to settle for a life without passion and aliveness. That's so just like, there's so much to learn, there's so much to grow. And then my view is, what's next is always better. If I make it so, it's my job to make it so. 
And I think that's how we have to navigate. But most of us, most of us have been conditioned not to, to take a risk. And once you peel the crust, you know, you know, peel that crust away and see who you really are, you open your mind to a whole nother world. So I've opened my mind up to a whole nother world that most people can't even fathom because they haven't dug deep. So they think, people think I'm crazy because I found a whole nother way of living. I think they're crazy for never even trying to get to the other side of whatever's in front of them. So what drives me every day is finding more of myself. And being my best is a never ending journey. If you study a subject every day for one hour a day, five days a week, in five years you will become an expert in that area. Some things simply have to be done every day. You know, the old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, eating seven apples all at once isn't going to give you the same benefit. If you want to improve, intentional growth needs to be a habit. A habit is something I do continually, not once in a while. Motivation may get you going, but the positive habits you develop and practice consistently are what keep you improving as I have worked to improve on a day by day basis. Two words have helped me to stay on track. The first is intention. Every morning as I start my day, I intend to learn something that day. This develops a mindset in me to look for things that will help me improve. The other word is contemplation. Time alone is an essential for self-improvement. When I spend time thinking about my challenges, experiences, and observations, it allows me to gain perspective. I can evaluate any losses and I can learn from them. Contemplation time by myself also gives me time to do positive self-talk. The most important words we will ever utter are those words we say to ourselves, about ourselves, when we are by ourselves. During these conversations, we can beat ourselves up and make ourselves feel really small or we can learn and build ourselves up so that we become better. If you want to spend some time each day to try to improve yourself, you might want to begin by asking yourself three questions at the end of the day, as I do. They are, what did I learn today? What spoke both to my heart and my head? How did I grow today? What touched my heart and affected my actions? What will I do differently? Unless I can state specifically what I plan to do differently, I won't learn anything. One of the things I don't do is compare myself to others during that time. There's a reason for that. My desire is to not become superior to anybody else. I only want to be superior to my former self. Intention and contemplation assist me in doing that. Intentional improvement is within the reach of anyone no matter how experienced or green, educated or ignorant, rich or poor. To start improving today, do these three things. Decide you are worth improving to improve yourself. You must believe you can improve. Author Dennis Whitley has a wonderful definition for personal development. He says that it is the conviction that there is value in your dreams. Personal development, he says is the belief that you are worth the effort, time, and energy needed to develop yourself. It gives you permission to invest in yourself so you can develop your own potential. You can invest in yourself. You don't need anyone's dreams, but your own. And you don't need to become anyone other than yourself at your best. The great philosopher Thomas Carlyle once wrote, let each become all that he was created capable of being. I can't think of a better definition of success. Life challenges us every day to develop our capabilities to the fullest. We're successful when we reach for the highest that's within us. When we give the best we have, life doesn't require us to always come out on top. It asks only that we do our best to improve at whatever level of experience we are currently on. Pick an area to improve. You will have plenty of time to improve other areas of your life. Focus on the one now that makes the most of your strengths and is closest to your sense of purpose. Um, suggesting you to spend an hour a day improving in that area. Then 
take it slow but steady. We always overestimate what we can get done in a day or a week, but we underestimate what we can get done in a year. Just imagine what you will be able to get done in five years. Find opportunities to improve in the wake of your losses. Focused strategic improvement is important to success, but so is learning from our losses as they come. However, let me say this, some lessons in life cannot wait. You must make the most of them when they occur. If you don't examine what went wrong while the details are fresh, you may lose the ability to learn the lesson. Besides, if you neglect to learn the lesson immediately, you may experience the loss again. Business professor George Knox said, when you cease to be better, you cease to be good. When you stop growing, you cease to be useful, a weed in the garden of prosperity. We are what we are today because we were what we were yesterday, and our thoughts today determine our actions tomorrow. Those who learn from their losses give themselves that permission. As your friend, I give it to you also. Knowledge may come from study, but wisdom comes from learning and improving in the wake of your mistakes. I always try to remember that I am a work in progress. When I maintain that perspective, I realize that I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have it all together. I don't need to try to have all the answers. And I don't need to learn everything in a day. When I make a mistake, it's not because I'm a failure or worthless. I just didn't do something right because I still haven't improved enough in some part of the process. And that motivates me to keep growing and improving. Every time you reach the next level, you grow. And every time you grow, your potential changes. After you conquer that challenge, you discover that what you are now capable of has changed. You have more strength to conquer higher mountains. If you are going to reach your true potential, you have much bigger challenges to face. There's an unlimited amount of mountains to climb because your growth is unlimited. And because your growth is unlimited, that means your potential is also unlimited. It's never ending, a never ending journey of growth and expansion. Your growth is unlimited in every area. What can I do now to make those changes so I can reach the next level in my health? Because the new energy I will get from better health is going to help me get to the next level in other areas as well. What can I learn or commit to now to make that area of my life better? Can my mental health and self-image be better? What can I work on every day to make sure my inner talk and sense of self is better? Because the better I feel about me, the better I am going to show up in this world. When I get to the end of my life, I want to know for sure I left nothing on the table. I want to know I gave my heart and soul to reach my truest potential. I want to know I did all I could to carve out the greatest version of me. No regrets. That's what it's about. Having zero regrets. And you can only have no regrets if you gave every ounce of your soul while you were alive on this planet. Every area can be mastered. So I am going to master every area. What's the point in having one piece of the pie? I'm cooking the whole thing, so I'm going to enjoy the whole thing, piece by piece, until my soul is full, and it will never be full until the end of my life. When I look in the mirror and can say, honestly, I gave everything to be my very best, and I'm proud of who I have become, until that day I will not stop. I want to know what my life would be like if I just gave everything I have for my goals and dreams. Not just one day, every day. What if I got better every day? Not just one day, a new piece of knowledge I could use to benefit my future. How great could I become? Ask yourself that question. How great could I become? What areas of my life could be the very best they have ever been? What could I commit to right now to make absolutely sure I am pushing for my highest potential? I want you to make that commitment today. Do whatever you must do to ensure you get to the end with no regrets.